Hydrocarbons. Naming hydrocarbons. Objectives. Name hydrocarbons given their structural formulas. Alkyl group. Straight chain alkanes begin with a prefix indicating the number of carbon atoms and they end with the suffix ane. The alkane on the right has seven carbon atoms, beginning with hept. And since there's a single bond between the carbon atoms, it's an alkane. Therefore, the name is heptane. Branched chain alkanes are named in a similar fashion, with the branches called substituents included in the name. Substituent groups formed by the removal of one hydrogen from the end of an alkane chain are known as alkyl groups, and they are named by adding the suffix yl. For example, methyl or ethyl. Similarly, three carbon alkyl groups are called propyl or four carbon butyl, and so on. Naming alkenes with one substituent. Step one is to identify the longest carbon chain called the parent chain. Step two is to number the carbon chain in order to have the most substituents and such that the lowest number is at each substituent. And finally, step three is to identify the type of substituent. In this example, let's explore the longest carbon chain. So this is option one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Or option two, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Therefore, we're going to use this parent chain as our longest parent chain. We can number it next from left to right, or we can also number it from right to left. Next, we need to identify or select which numbering system from left to right, the red, or from right to left, the blue, would make our substituent or branch have the lowest number. Where are our branches? The branch is found at the bottom. In left to right numbering scheme, the branch is at carbon 5, while from right to left, the branch is found at carbon 3. Therefore, we will use the right to left. Next, our numbering scheme is established. We identify our substituent group as methyl because there is one carbon. We will name our structure by adding the parent chain, the substituent, and a number where the substituent is located. Separating the number and the substituent will have a dash. Let's name our alkane with one substituent. Using the organic prefix, we have a seven carbon, so our parent chain will be called heptane. Our substituent is a methyl group, so it will be known as methylheptane and the substituent group is located on carbon number 3. The name for alkene with one substituent is 3-methylheptane. Note, there are no spaces, also there are no uppercase letters in the name. Next, naming alkenes with two or more substituents. Using the same steps, we identify the longest parent chain. The longest parent chain has eight carbons and we're numbering them from left to right. We also can number them from right to left. In this example, the branches or the substituent groups are located from left to right on carbon six and on carbon two, or they are located on carbon three and carbon seven, numbering from right to left. Here we see numbering in from left to right will give our branches 2 and 6. So we'll use that numbering scheme. Now, we identify the name for our branches. We have methyl and also we have another methyl group at the top. We will not combine these two separate branches together and call them ethyl because they are two individual branches found in the chain. So each branch has their own unique name. 
the carbon 2 is methyl and the carbon 6 is also methyl. Here we'll name the parent chain. Note, prefixes must be used to indicate the number of identical substituents. So we have our substituents and then we'll use a prefix to identify how many substituents we have. If there are two of them, we'll use di, three, tri, four, tetra, and so on. Next, we'll add our prefix to the substituent followed by a dash and numbers to separate the location for where those prefixes are, where those substituents are found, separated by commas. The longest parent chain is eight carbons, so we call it octane. The substituents are methyl, and they are two methyl, so we call them dimethyl, and they are located on carbons two and six. Our final name is two comma six dash dimethyl octane. Two comma three dimethyl octane is incorrect because you're only supposed to use one numbering scheme. You cannot number from left to right and then in the middle of naming, you change the numbering scheme from right to left. You must follow one numbering scheme throughout. Naming alkenes with two different substituents. Again, we'll identify the longest parent chain. Here we have our parent chain has eight carbons. We can number them from left to right or from right to left. Next, we identify our branches. Then we can identify which order from left to right or right to left will give our branches the lowest possible number. In this example, it is from left to right. It's from, it will give our branches carbon 3 and carbon 5, as opposed to carbon 4 and carbon 6 from the other direction. The branches are called methyl. Now we have a second branch, and this branch is different. It has two carbons in it. Therefore, it is known as an ethyl group. Next, we'll name the parent chain, followed by the substituent, and the number for that substituent. Next, we also need to name and number the second substituent. Note, we always write the substituents in alphabetical order, excluding prefixes. Meaning, if there are two methyl groups and we use di, we will ignore the D and use M in using the alphabetical order, which we will address in the next example. Continuing with this example three, the location for this one substituent for the ethyl is 3 carbon, so it's known as 3 ethyl. The next substituent is located at carbon number 5, so it's 5 methyl. And the longest chain is 8, so 3 ethyl, 5 methyl octane. Naming this alkane is 3 dash ethyl dash 5 dash methyl octane. Practice question. Name the organic compound below. Here we identify the longest chain. It has six carbons. We can number them from right, left to right and also from right to left. Next, we identify our branches or our substituent groups. There are two of them. And they can be located at carbon three and five or carbon two and four. So we'll use the one that has lower numbers, carbon two and carbon four, numbering from right to left in blue. Now, our name. Let's name our branches. We have a one carbon branch, which is known as the methyl, and we have another one carbon branch, also known as methyl. Longest chain, there are six carbons, so we name it hexane. Now we need to name our substituent, it's methyl, and there are two of them, so we use dimethyl, and now we have to write their locations carbon 2 and carbon 4. The name for a compound is 2 comma 4 dash dimethyl hexane. Back to question 2, name the organic compound. First step is to identify the longest parent chain. Here we have 6 carbons. We can name them from left to right or from right to left. From left to right, the Branches are located on carbon 4 or from right to left, it's located at carbon 3. So we'll select the one located at carbon 3. Now there are two branches located on the third carbon. One is the methyl 
and another one is methyl. Let's name it. The longest chain is hexane. There are substituents called methyl. There are two methyl, so use dimethyl, and you're located at carbon 3. So our answer is 3, 3 dash dimethyl hexane. 4 dash dimethyl 3 dash dimethyl hexane is incorrect since you need to indicate where each substituent group is located. Practice question 3. Name the organic compound below. Step 1 is to identify the longest carbon chain. Here we have a 6 carbon chain. We can number it from left to right or from right to left. Next we identify our branches and the location on the carbon chain that would give them the lowest possible numbers. We have two options, 2, 3, and 5, or 2, 4, and 5. We'll pick from left to right, 2, 3, and 5. Next, we identify our branches. We have a methyl, another methyl, and an ethyl group. Since the longest chain has six carbons, we call it hexane, but we need to use the ethyl before the methyl in the naming for the prefix, even though there are two methyl groups. So we have dimethyl hexane and they're located on carbons 2 and carbon 5 and our ethyl group is located at carbon 3. So our name is 3-ethyl-2,5-dimethyl hexane. Practice question 4. Identify the name for the organic compound below. Step one is to identify the longest possible carbon chain. So we have a few options. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbon, or we have one, two, three, four, five carbon, or we have one, two, three, four, five carbon, or we have one, two, three, four, five carbon, or we can also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. Since this is our longest chain, we can number it from left to right or from right to left. Next, we identify our branches or our substituent groups. We have three substituent groups. Now, which numbering scheme should we choose? The branches are located from left to right at carbons 4, 5, and 7, or from right to left, 2, 4, and 5. We'll therefore select from right to left, 2, 4, and 5. Let's name our branches. The longest parent chain is octane, and we have 2-methyl, so it's dimethyl, and they're located on carbons 2 and carbon 5, and we have an ethyl group located at carbon 4. So the name for a compound is 4-ethyl-2,5-dimethyl-octane. Naming alkenes. Step 1. Identify the longest carbon chain called the parent chain. Step 2. Number the carbon chain such that the double bond has the lowest number. Step 3. Identify the type of substituent or the branch present. In the first example, there are three carbons. We identify that as the parent chain. There's a double bond present, so it's an alkene. We number them from left to right or from right to left. Our double bond has to be on the lowest numbered carbon. Here, the double bond is between carbon 1 and carbon 2. Therefore, we can say the double bond is on carbon 1. Since it's 3 carbon, it's called prop. And it's an alkene, it's called propene. 1 propene. Now, if you were to flip the molecule around, it will be the same thing, numbering it from right to left. In this example, we can use the name propene. For the second example, there are four carbons with a double bond present. Numbering them from left to right, we observe it's between carbon 2 and 3. If we number it from the other direction, it's also between carbon 2 and 3. In this example, since there are four carbons in alkene, it's known as butene. And the double bond is present in the carbon 2, therefore it's called 2-butene. In the third example, there are five carbons present. And a double bond in the middle, it's an alkene. Let's number them from left to right and right to left. We observe that the double bond from the right to left direction is found on carbon 2. Therefore, we use that numbering system. Since it's five carbons, it's an alkene, we start to name it pentene. 
And since the double bond is on carbon 2, we call it 2-pentene. Naming alkynes. They follow the same rules as naming alkenes. First, we identify the longest chain. Here we have our carbons, 6 carbon. We can number it from left to right, which will give our triple bond location between carbons 4 and carbon 5. Or numbering it from right to left will give our triple bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3. Selecting that scheme, which give our triple bond located at carbon 2. There are 6 carbons, so we name it hexane. And it's the triple bond is located at carbon 2, so it is at 2 hexane. Practice question 4. Name the organic compound below. Let's identify our longest parent chain. The longest parent chain must contain our double or triple bond. In this example, we see the triple bond found in this chain. There are 5 carbons in our chain. We can number them from left to right, or we can number them from right to left. Since our triple bond must have the lowest number, we will number it from right to left, where the triple bond will have carbon 2. Next, we identify our branch or substituent. In this example, it is methyl. Let's name our compound. Since it's an alkyne, because there's a triple bond, we'll name it pentyne, because there are five carbons. The location of the triple bond is on carbon 2, so that it is known as 2-pentyne. Now for the substituent group, methyl. The methyl is located on carbon 4, so it is called 4-methyl-2-pentyne. 